Time to look back at the last Forge FC contest. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. Here is Match and Review. My word, what a rocket. With Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Hey, Forge fans. Anthony Urcioli here. Jessica Lisi aboard as well. It is the Match and Review. And it is a one-all draw in the first leg of the CPL semifinal between Forge and Calvary out west. At uh, in Foothills County. Now, normally a draw would not be considered a positive result, especially for Forge. But in this case, it is because we're looking at two legs here. The return leg is back in Hamilton. And it's as if this game just didn't even happen. It's now just one game. It's a one game playoff at home for Forge for the right to uh, play in the championship. And depending what happens between Ottawa and uh, Pacific, could be hosting a championship game. But uh, first things first, Jess. Forge came out firing. I, I got to tell you, I was a little, I, I don't want to say I expected Forge to sit back, but I did expect there to be kind of a feeling out process. It's a playoff game. You're on the road. Maybe just a little bit of caution in terms of making mistakes because a draw would have served Forge well here, uh, but they didn't. I mean, they they it was an all out attack and it was kind of emphasized by that Alex Ashenyodi Anson crossbar just a few minutes in. Yeah, I mean, that was a, you know, that was a great um, opportunity for Alex. Unfortunate that it, it did hit the crossbar. It was Cavalry had the luck today. Um, but, you know, I think overall, I wouldn't say that it was Forge's best performance. I do think that they have a lot to be proud of. They did have the energy, but I did feel that it was, it was hectic within that first bit. Again, like you said, within that first five or so, they did come out, you know, guns blazing. Um, you could really tell they wanted it. But I would say as the first half went on, it did slowly fade. It became kind of hectic. And, you know, even that opportunity um, by Alex, it actually came from two poor decisions to, to, to strike the ball and attempt to, um, you know, get a shot on goal. Uh, obviously, Cavalry didn't do very well defending. They continued to let out rebounds. And again, mm -hmm. Alex was able to get a shot off. But I did feel that although they were having success within those flank areas and, um, you know, with those balls in behind, they weren't making the best decisions within that final third to really create great opportunities. Um, so, yeah, overall, I wouldn't say that it was their cleanest performance. Um, but like you said, uh, a draw in this case is is also great. And I do feel it gives them a slight leg up to come back and, and play at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Forge came out with a 4-3-3 formation. Tristan Borges missed the last couple of games. He got into some card trouble. I'm going to try and break down the situation with the cards because rules have been amended in terms of which cards carry over and how the whole thing works. There's a whole explanation from the, the Canadian Premier League. I'll, I'll, I'll read it a little later. Yeah, and, break it uh, down for us. <laughs> hopefully we'll get to, I'll try. Uh, but they came out, but Borges played, we saw him play in a, you know, kind of a, in a 10 role near the end of the year um, as more of an attacking midfielder. This time though, he goes back to the left wing to see us in the middle, Schwanier on the right side. And uh, Sissoko, Becker, Hojab Rapport in the middle, and then you had Ashton Morgan, Alex Ashton, Yodi Anson, and uh, Malik as the two center backs, and then Rama as the right back. Uh, but we were talking about the way Forge was, there was some room on the flanks. And, and Forge, was, it was an interesting approach here because when the ball was on that left side, Borges wasn't really a winger. He was coming toward the middle, and Ashton Morgan was almost taking over the flank. It's almost like there was a big kind of... Um, just a switch with, and then you had um, not only was Ashton Morgan playing as kind of like a winger, Sissoko was there to support, but Borg just kind of drifted into the middle when the ball was on that side. And I think you noticed too, a lot of activity on those wings because there was some space there. Yeah, I, you know, I think Borges is a great player. You often see him drifting in, as you mentioned, he does come alive in the middle. I've always said that I enjoy watching him play as a 10. Um, yeah, I think yeah. he adds a lot of flair to the middle of the park. Obviously, again, great player, great quality. So he does bring a lot to the flanks as well. Um, but I do think that with Ashton Morgan going forward, Forge was caught quite a few times um, where they were able to get ca caught in that counter attack. And you saw that on the goal you know, Cavalry was able to get that switch ball over to the side that Ashton Morgan was very pushed forward on. Um, and, you know, it led to a goal. So that is unfortunate. But I do agree that they were taking advantage of that, that the flank space that Cavalry was providing to them. I just, again, think that they didn't do their best job in creating quality chances. And if they did create chances, it wasn't the most clinical approach um, to finishing them. Yeah, we're going to hear from both sides because... Uh, when you mentioned that the Forge got caught on that first Calvary goal, 
the chess match between these two coaches, between Bobby Smirniotis and Tommy Wilden Jr. continues because th- there there was a bit of a cat and mouse game going on here with the tactics. And we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, you mentioned the goal. It was Klomp, Dan Klomp, and uh, the defender who got ahead on it. And it's one nothing Calvary in the 42nd minute. Now, here's why it's just it's interesting because... When you look at the stats, and I made sure to write them down. So Calvary's leading one nothing at half. The shot attempts are seven to six in favor of Calvary. Shots on target are five to two in favor of Calvary. Possession sixty six percent went to Forge. So Forge did what they wanted to do. They controlled the ball, but Calvary was also they're really efficient, and they picked their spots and they used their counter effectively. Yeah, you, you did You did notice quite a few times Cavalry was sitting back. They were almost allowing Forge to get comfortable mm-hmm. within their attack and get those numbers forward and catch them on the counter. And again, that's what led to the goal. And, you know, there was a few chances similar to it. But, um, yeah, I would definitely say Cavalry um, and Forge have that chess match going. But I, I feel like that's, you know, that's inevitable when you're playing each other so many times. You yeah. get to know the strengths and weaknesses of, of both teams and players that, you know, make up the core of the group. So, I just think it's inevitable at this point that it's always going to be a chess mass ma- match between the two. And we we get into the second half now. Calvary looking, they have to be feeling pretty good about the way that first half went. But Wubens Paseas with the goal. And it was a header and it was off of a set piece free kick. Delivery by Kyle Becker in the 47th minute. And Becker ends up with the assist. You could not have had a better delivery than what Becker provided for Paseas. Yeah, no, it was it was great. It was whipped in and it was perfectly placed. Paseas obviously had that urgency and that aggressiveness to go into it and, and finish it. It was a great header. But again, you know, without that quality of a delivery, it is really difficult to to put that much force behind a cross. Um, like through your header, I mean, that much force yeah. behind a header, um, unless the cross is being whipped in as it was from from Becker. Let me ask you as a striker. In that situation, are you expecting the keeper to come charging out there? And, and, you know, Carducci, it looked like he may have had a play on the ball, but I don't know if he was playing it cautious because Ford did have multiple players in the area and you just didn't know which head it was going to come off of. And he looked a little tentative on that play. Yeah, I mean... Most of the time when the ball is that close proximity to the keeper, you are expecting them to come out and challenge it at least. You know, I do think based on how far the ball was from the keeper, I don't know if he would have gotten to it and, you know, actually made a stop or been able to fully clear it. He could have potentially caused, you know, more ruckus within that box and maybe not Mm. made it as easy an opportunity for Paseas, but so yes, to answer your question, I would expect the goalkeeper to come out, but at the same time, it is tricky. Um, to say a hundred percent, I am not a goalkeeper. Um, but as a striker, I am used to almost being punched in the head in that situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, at the same time, he did play it safe and and it could have potentially worked out in his favor if Becker was not, you know, a whiz behind that ball that he had sent in. So yeah, to answer your question, I do think that he could have potentially come out, um, and he did play it a little safe, but at the same time, it, it really just depends. It's, it's hard to say in the moment. His his brain was probably trying to process it ahead of time and make the right decision, and he just felt that was the safe, safe way yeah. to go. Yeah, and we didn't get any post-game uh, comments from Carducci, so well, I guess we'll, we'll never know. But uh, we did get comments from Pasias, from Bobby Smirniotis, and, of course, Tommy Wilden Jr., um, and Klomp as well from Calvary. And we'll, we'll hear them all. Let's just go through the final stat line here. So Forge did finish with 62% of the possession. Shot attempts, 10-9 to 9 in favor of Forge. Shots on target, though, five to three in favor of Calvary. Now, they had five in the first half. So in the second half, Calvary didn't get much done. And I wonder if that early goal to start the half almost stuns you a little bit. Because at halftime, you're working with a one nothing lead at home in the first leg of a playoff game. And you have to be thinking, this is exactly what we want. Here's what we're going to do in the second half. But then, boom, you get scored on, and it almost throws that whole halftime game plan out the window, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's interesting because when you are, you have that home field advantage and you have that, let's say, early lead because you're going into half with a lead. It's interesting that Cavalry's response was not to, you know, come out just as fiery as they did after Mm -hmm. that goal. Um, It seemed like they almost kind of lost their flair and had a lot of frustration, um, which was interesting. Again, I I know it is a frustrating situation. You you had the lead and now you don't and you have to chase it once again. But again, with the home field advantage and having that home crowd behind you, it's just an interesting 
um, thing to see that they didn't necessarily step up after being mm-hmm. scored on. And again, I know the momentum shifts and Forge is now, you know, riding a high because they just got the latest goal and they're back in the game. But, you know, we've spoke about this so many times from where Forge was the team being scored on um, after having a lead. And and we always point out that it, you cannot, you know, deflate afterwards you have to keep going you have to keep bringing that same urgency because the second you deflate and the momentum shifts it's very difficult to get back into the into the match and get back into the swing of things yeah and i mean calvary did not they didn't have a shot on goal in the second half um they didn't even have a corner kick in in the second half so very much it was uh forge kind of dictating play um so let's so that's your final one one so now we head back to hamilton on on sunday for the second leg of it's it's essentially yeah i mean that game just didn't even happen whoever wins this game and if it is tied after the 90 minutes uh we go to penalty kick so that's this weekend forge definitely on the front foot uh, heading into the second leg here let's check in now with forge head coach bobby smirniotis and uh, some of his remarks post-match yeah i thought it was a good performance you know we've come out in the beginning uh we want it to be the the aggressor, even though we're playing away from home. It's part of our uh, DNA as a club, and we've done it. You know, we've hit the crossbar in the beginning there and really put pressure on on Cavalry. And, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, we played uh, some excellent football on the pitch. I don't know if it was by design um, that Cavalry was a little bit deeper in the field. Didn't expect them to play uh, too much on the counter. So, again, I don't know if that was by design or whether it was uh, our play. But, uh, yeah, happy with the performance. I think we deserved a little bit more. Um. Tell me about Kyle Becker and what he means to this club in the clutch. Yeah, just excellent. You know, it's a big game today, and he's out there, and he's, and he's doing what he's been doing here for, for four years in all the big games that he's played for us in the league and in CONCACAF and all the competitions we've been part of. You know, he's a guy we, uh, we can rely on in these, uh, these important moments. Uh, and it's important in the club. You know, we've become a much younger club this year um, with players and a lot of turnover and who we've had uh, playing with us. So it's important for Kyle to be who he is, uh, the leader on the field, off the field, and the guy who's going in there and putting in the performance that he's put in today. Yeah, when you see Alex hit the bar that early um, and then despite dominating possession, you, you give up the first goal. When you go into half, how do you keep the spirits high? Because I thought maybe you deserved a little more in the first half. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. You know, you you reiterate the positive uh, from that first half. I thought we were brilliant in a lot of moments uh, there. Uh, we've gone into the deep positions that we usually get into. Uh, they give us a high percentage of uh, of getting chances uh, to the goal. So we just needed to continue that. Uh, we'd been here uh, twice before this year and gone down in the match, and uh, we've been able to to bring back that uh, score. So we just gave him the same uh, little bit of advice and uh, told him to continue on what we're doing. It's obviously excellent when you can get that tying goal uh, to start the half early on. Um, that settles things a little bit down because, you know, when you look at the playoff games, they're all about details. Uh, there's always a little bit of nerves. Everyone is paying attention to uh, the score uh, at all times as the player. So I think that was very good for us, getting that, uh, that early goal in the second half. And then, you know, both teams have had some good chances in the second half, and it's... I think for the fans uh, here in Calgary, for those back in Hamilton and across the league, they've seen a quality match today. So, Jess, you heard Bobby there talking about the, the fact that he was surprised that Calgary sat back as much as they did, especially early on when you're the home, you're expecting the home team to dictate play at least early on, but it was yeah. all Forge. Now, I, I, it's funny because after the match um, on One Soccer, Tommy Wilden Jr., Calgary coach, spoke to, um, to, to the panel there, and he mentioned that that was part of their game plan. And he said that he knows that Forge, they like to dictate play. They like to dominate play, dominate the ball possession. And he basically said, we're going to, we let them do that. If that's what they want to do, that's what we'll do. But what we're going to do is because they bring so many players forward, we're going to try and catch them and hope, you know, kind of uh, go with them into a mistake. And that's, that's what led to Calvary's goal. So the sitting back, you know, we say these two teams, these are the two most, um, attacking minded clubs in the CPL. So to see one in the home side retreat, it was odd to see, but that was all part of the game plan and the chess match between Tommy Wilden Jr. and Bobby Smirniotis and these two clubs continues. Uh, yeah, you don't often see the home side in a playoff game sitting back the way Calvary did. Yeah, no, you definitely don't. But at the same time, you know, it worked for them. Um, I mean, not in the second half, like we said, they didn't get very much attack. So you did see it kind of crumble underneath them after Forge was able to kind of find their footing and get that, that goal. But in the first half, they were able to capitalize on their opportunity and they created a few more opportunities where they did catch 
you know, Forge's strength, let's say, Forge has a lot of strength in attacking in numbers. They were able to use that as a weakness against them because of their lack of numbers that were left back. So it that, is... That's exactly what he said. Yeah, he said Forge's yeah. strength can also be their weakness. So it's it's exactly what you're saying that, that there's... Yeah, it, it, you know. I mean, well, wow, because <laughs> I didn't catch the, the post game, but that's... Uh, that works for me. Let's just Same say page. I did. You can coach Calvary <laughs> is what you're saying. But um, no, I mean, I that's a it's a great point because I do agree. He was, you know, he pointed out that it was their their strength and their weakness that they were able to capitalize on. And again, it led to the goal and it caused a lot of issues for Forge. They did get caught quite a few times, even though, and then they didn't capitalize on their opportunities that they did create in the attack. So we spoke about all this already, but, you know, I don't want to repeat myself, but that was their it was their downfall. The fact that they were creating so many opportunities with numbers going forward and were not able to, to retreat in time. You know, who was not surprised that Calvary sat back was uh Wubens Pasias. He actually said that he, he expected it. Maybe Wubens knows something that, that we don't, but uh, <laughs> here's the goal scorer Pasias after the match. Uh, how did it feel to, to get that goal so quick into the second half? It felt really good um, for the team. We you know we were down, but um Right during the um, during the halftime, we knew that we were able to score another goal, well, to score a goal, and that what we did at the beginning of the second half. So, again, uh, good good stuff, good cross from backs, and um, again, I'm grateful for that goal. Like I always say, it's God's plan, so I'm really grateful for that goal. Did, did Cavalry surprise you a little bit with how deep they sat today? No. Um, the, this year we played a lot against. Uh, team where they were sitting back waiting for us to do some mistakes so we weren't really surprised about that of course when we play against them usually they play uh, a little bit higher on the field but uh, I don't think it surprised us uh, and I think we did a good job I mean not just your goal but that the delivery from from Kyle off that set piece everything just looked perfect uh, as the ball went in yeah like you said it's a perfect cross uh, everyone knows uh, the quality of backs on the on on the ball, and I knew that if I could put myself in a in a good position, uh, I knew that the ball uh, were could could come and I could score. So again, great ball from backs, and I just uh, I just had to finish that play. So it was a, a good play. And um, you know the the result, the draw, normally your club would not be happy with the draw, but in this case, it's as if the game never happened and you're, you only have one game to win at home and you could potentially even host a final. So maybe just talk about this result and uh, the confidence heading into the second leg. No, I think for us, it's a, it's a good result uh, from uh, being lead um, after the first half to come back and uh, to stay, to keep the score until the end of the game. I think it's a, it's a, a big result for us, especially away. And now we just have to do the, the business at home in front of uh, our crowd. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to be able to do that. All right, you heard from the uh, one goal scorer. Let's hear from the other on the Calvary side of things. Uh, Dan Klomp for Calvary FC post-match. Dan, what does a 1-1 draw mean to this team after the home game? Well, if you look at the match, and I don't think we started that, that great in the first five minutes. Um, I think they had the upper hand. Uh, giving away a couple big chances, but um, making the 1-0 uh, feels very good just before half time. And then the way we start the second half is not, not like justifiable. It's very, very hard to uh, make them score the 1-1 one, one, one minute in the second half. So I feel like uh, it's okay going there uh, with a draw. Um, I feel confident going into the next game though. I feel the team is, there's a good atmosphere around them, so we feel good. Uh, talk about your goal a little bit. Uh, came on the counter. You guys did a pretty good job of the chances to get counters, and the headers were close, and you finally put one in. Yeah. Um, in a league like this, where you play each other, in this case, Forge six times, you, you know what their uh, game style is. So we know Forge likes to dominate and go uh, up the pitch with a lot of people. So that leaves a bit of like a lot of gaps in behind. So that's what we try and exploit. Um, and yeah. I know uh, Joe Mason a little bit by now, so I know what Ronnie is going to make, and I saw the space, and I thought, like, why not go for it? Finally, 1-1, one, one, obviously you're going into Forge's territory. This is going to be one goal, I think, that finishes this whole series. What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, it's always close games against Forge. I think not many times there's like a two goal difference uh, between us. So uh, yeah, there's everything to play for and it's always going to be very tight and probably one of the fiercest uh, duels in the, in the league history. Uh, you know, I mentioned that I, I heard Tommy Wilden Jr. post-match on One Soccer. Another thing that he said, which I thought is kind of part of this gamesmanship, is he, he made kind of a flippant comment about Forge acting as if they won the match, the way they were celebrating afterwards, but it was only a draw. I don't know what they're celebrating about type, <laughs> type thing, uh, which, you know, in this context, it, it it's not a win, but it kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's a positive result for Forge, is I guess the way, it, it's not a win technically, but it is a positive result. Uh, but as we, we've talked about him a lot, here he is himself, Tommy Wilden Jr. after the match. I think it's important in a, in a two-legged affair, you don't get, you know, it doesn't get too lopsided too early because it changes the narrative. Now it's just winning in, in the, at their, their house. So um, that's where the game was always going to be decided. So it was important that it was close. We had our chances, um, didn't take them, but I think we just cancelled each other out there. How happy are you after taking the goal early in the second half? How happy were you with the response of the team? It was really good because it was something that we'd been working on through the week. We knew um, one of our strengths is also one of their weaknesses and uh, we knew there was an opportunity there and we thought we could have possibly done it a couple times more. It wasn't to be, so uh, you just take the draw, you, you take the good things. I thought we defended collectively very, very well today. And finally, how comfortable are you going to Hamilton 1-1? Listen, it's not an easy place to go. We actually strangely enjoy going there because it's a bigger pitch. It's wide open. Um, it, it's one of the better turf pitches in, in the league. And uh, the pressure's on them now because they're expected to beat us at their home. So actually flips the switch and um, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you guys had a little troubles early, but you got the counter going. I mean, it was... A, Bobby said he felt like they deserved more. You guys feel like you deserved a little more... Listen, I've, I've sat in front of you here. Uh, possession is only a part of the tale. Um, it's what you do with it that counts. I think we had bigger chances. They got drunk on possession. That's part of their style. Um, but we've sat here, 70% possession against Pacific, uh, sorry, Atletico and lost 3-0. Right? So it's what you do with it that counts. Marco's not really had much to do in terms of a big save. Um, so I'm okay with that. I thought collectively, defensively, we were very good and our fast attacks were very good. So... And I think there's another side to us that we didn't show today, which we can have that chance next week. All right, your final again from Calgary. 1-1 one, one Forge Calvary, the first leg of their CPL semifinal. The return leg goes Sunday, 5 o'clock at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton, forgefc.ca slash tickets to get yours. And uh, before we, we let you all go, the end of the match kind of set up what we might see in the next one. Um, it, it got kind of heated, you know, Tristan Henry kind of nothing that he did, but he took a shot in the back. Um, I, I wrote down here, Tristan Borges elbow to the head in the 62nd minute. So it did, it did get a little, a little heated near the end of the match. And it's kind of what we expected. And now it sets up a must win for both teams in the return leg. Yeah, I mean, you expect it to get heated, you know, emotions are running high, especially in that situation for Cavalry, you know, they know they're at home, this is their game, um, you know, Forge is, you know, t you spoke about how the Cavalry coach mentioned that Forge was celebrating as if they won, and, and I think that's an interesting comment, I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're celebrating because they probably didn't expect themselves to get back in the game the way they did. You know, again, you are at somewhat of a disadvantage when you're going into halftime already down and you're not at home. So for them to be able to return um, to Hamilton in their hometown and, you know, they, to them, they feel like they're on top of the world right now and they know their quality. And today wasn't their best quality, but for them, the belief is that they're going to bring that quality to this next match and, and, you know, really light it up at home. So mm -hmm. I just thought that was a pretty funny comment that you, uh, that you pointed out there, but like, again, yeah. Emotions are always high, um, so I think frustration is going to be a guaranteed in you know as we saw in this match, but also within that next match, probably more so within the next match. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I love this stuff. You know, there's a reason the Labor Day Classic in Hamilton between the Argos and the Thai Cats are is what it is. It's because you have these this kind of gamesmanship, and there, there's so many just underlying connections between the clubs and they played so many times. Yeah. I mean, these players, they, they, they lived in bubbles together during COVID and 
yeah, it, it's fun. It's part of the game and it's good for the supporters because it's what it gets the fans going. You know, when, when a guy yeah, like absolutely. Tristan Henry is getting booed every time he touches the ball, that's exciting for an athlete. You want to be engaged. <laughs> you, you Knowing that you got under the opponent's fan's skin, that, that's a win as far as I'm concerned. So I think this, yeah. this is what we expected. And it definitely sets up an intriguing second return leg uh, in Hamilton. All right. I'm Anthony Urcioli. And I'm Jess Lisi. <laughs> Match in review, Forge Calvary with the draw. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Match in Review with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. For the latest on all things Forge FC, subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.